Hey there YouTube, uh, welcome to uh, a little bit of a different video. Uh, I do occasionally uh, put these sort of painting style videos up. But um, I thought, well, I was actually toying with the idea of whether to do one or not. And um, in, in my comment section, uh, George from uh, that Mofo Demon channel, uh, he uh, sort of egged me on and said, you know, why don't you do a painting uh, video for these chaps? Uh, I presume it was for the Nassau. Um, so I thought, yeah, you know what? Um, they're different enough uh, that I'll uh, I'll do one. So uh, out of my latest battalion that I've been working on all week, um, I have uh, I just happened to have uh, two front rank uh, figures that uh, I put within the battalion. Um, funnily enough, these guys, uh, one actually is a, a sergeant, and the other one uh, is going to. Uh, uh, basically be a sergeant um, because they always have uh, two sergeants uh, in a non-mounted uh, battalion so this chap will be going on my NCO stand and this chap will be part of the command stand because he's basically uh, a basic trooper but as you can see uh, there's actually no difference between uh, sergeants for these chaps um, they both they, they all have uh, sabre briquets now I suppose this chap uh, no no uh, actually, thinking about it, I think he has got a longer, a longer sabre briquet. Uh, but that could just be the modelling, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, as far as I can tell, uh, there's no difference. Um, whether that's uh, figures-wise is another another question. But yeah, I'm going to basically take you through these two chaps. Now, why two figures, you say? Uh, well, it's basically just so... Um, because painting one figure on its own is going to take uh, a fair amount of time. Um, and painting two figures uh, at the same time is actually um, going to not take that much extra time uh, and also it gives me something to um, to do uh, during the cuts uh, because obviously this isn't going to be one long video it's, just, it's going to be sort of a cut together um, but I am going to try and do uh, a lot of the painting uh, on screen if I can uh, that's my phone uh, banging off uh, my, my, my sister's uh, um, basically took in a stray cat uh, about a month ago and uh, she's uh, pregnant So and, and uh, she actually literally had kittens uh, last night so that's uh, uh, a happy event for the, for the day um, so yeah uh, two uh, front rank guys here both going to be sergeants now the only difference really painting wise is that I always give sergeants white gloves so uh, the only real difference between painting a normal infantryman um, and, a, and uh, an NCO is literally just going to be the white gloves. Uh, so I don't, ha you know, when I do the flesh, I'll just do the heads. Uh, but other than that, they'll be done, uh, you know, basically as a as a box standard trooper, which is uh, what I kind of wanted to do. Really, you know, I mean, it's no, it, doing an officer is, is slightly different uh, to the fact that they have different coloured trousers, etc., and slightly different uniforms. And I thought, well, um, assuming I do actually have these two front rank guys, and they're and they're quite. Uh, nice figures to do painting tutorials on um, or, or other painting styles I'm, I'm in no way is this going to be uh, classed as a tutorial um, but yeah so basically we have two figures here they've both been given uh, primes of um, Vallejo uh, model primer grey I believe it's called um, hand painted on as I always do and yeah they're ready to go so uh, like I say, this is. Uh, I suppose the biggest difference is that the, 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 this painting video will include my um, my contrast paint uh, additions that, that I now tend to do. Um, so as you can see, I have uh, the two colours uh, that I use: uh, black templar and wildwood. And basically, first the first thing I do is uh, I always do the black. Now I find it better to do it this stage uh, than actually uh, a little bit later on. Um, I used to do it after I uh, painted on the uniform colour, uh, but I've been finding lately that it's actually uh, a lot easier to actually do it um, as you, uh, you know, straight away, first thing. Um, so uh, basically just slap up your brush and literally uh, just slap it on. Um, I do try to avoid the pom-pom. Um, the and it doesn't really matter if you get it uh, anywhere else because uh, the this is literally like a base colour. Uh, so we want his hair to be black in this case. So uh, we're going to go over that. 
And as you can see, uh, what I was saying about it, the, the, the way the paint the paint flows on contrast paints, I mean, um, if, if I was to do this with like normal Vallejo Black, it would have taken probably uh, twice as long. We'll also go in and do uh, his uh, shoes. Now, like I say, you don't have to be at all tidy uh, when you do this. Um, it's literally just slapping it on. Um, uh, because uh, at the end of the day, as long as you get a, a decent amount of paint on your brush, because uh, if it if it if it goes if there's not enough uh, paint on the brush, then you're definitely going to have to go over it later. Um, but I find that if you load up your brush well, um, then you uh, if you're lucky, you, you, there's very little minimal uh, having to go back. Now I always do uh, the uh, shako, the shoes. Uh, any sword scabbards uh, and shoes uh, in, in this uh, black stage and also I do the uh, shako point or the, the bayonet shako point what am I on about uh, the bayonet uh, on the end of the musket and uh, yeah that's so that's all the black uh, there uh, we're just going to work on this one figure on screen uh, now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is do the wildwood uh, and obviously that's literally just going to go onto the musket and like I say, these are basically base colours, um, and I will, at a slightly later stage, uh, go over them uh, with uh, brown and, uh, well actually chocolate brown, which is, which is what the colour that I use for uh, for uh, muskets, French muskets. Even though these chaps are actually carrying what I think are brown buses, but there you go. Uh, so yeah, very quick, uh, literally just... Uh, just so happens that these guys are carrying their muskets at an optimum uh, angle. So there we go. Uh, that's the all the contrast painting done on this chap. Now I'm going to cut the video and we'll be back with the next stage. And obviously I would have just repeated what I've just done on the second figure. So I'll join you in a second. Okay, we're back. And uh, next up we are going to do the uniform. So uh, here we have uh, the, cut, the base colour for the uniform. I use uh, Vallejo Black Grey. And again, uh, basically the whole the whole uniform's covered, so uh, there's no worries about having to uh, just do the top part of the uniform. Um, now there is, uh, according to the Saint Jerome site, uh, the option to give some of them white trousers, um, but I don't actually. Uh, I think I'd rather have them all green. So uh, I'm actually not going to be doing that uh, with any of my Nassau. Um, We'll keep be keeping them all uh, in the green, uh, and only the officers uh, will have different coloured uh, trousers because they have grey trousers, as per uh, all the other uh, Dutch and Belgian officers. Um, so uh, again, you don't have to be too tidy. Um, I mean, uh, I'm not really worried about the. Um, the webbing because that's going to be uh, undercoated in white uh, and to tell you the truth uh, even though the turn backs are black uh, it doesn't really make any difference if you if you paint over on that paint over them uh, I just sat the paint on uh, I'll try and avoid them if I can but uh, to tell you the truth with black it doesn't really make any difference um, so I just snap it on basically um, I always find that uh, with greens that you always uh, find little bits that you miss um, and uh, again it's no big deal uh, I always do two or three uh, tidy ups uh, as I go along <coughs> because you always find that some paints rubbed off uh, from you like knock them over or um, maybe it rubbing against your finger when you're painting or whatever um, so it's not the end of the world again and the good thing about front rank is that they do actually have their uh, yellow stripes defined on their uh, trouser legs. So again, you don't have to worry about that. The uh, the battalion that I've just been painting, um, the uh, elite guys, they don't have uh, their lines defined. Um, I think they do on a couple of figures, um, but it's really, really fine. Um, now, whether they're, the moulds are old and... Uh, those lines aren't really uh, definely uh, sort of coming out when they're when they're molded. I don't know, but 
Um, I had to hand paint them all, um, and I think I, out of all of them that I've done, which is practically a battalion, uh, I literally have uh, these two chaps and three officers to do. Uh, there was no um, no lines at all. I think maybe one had had a faint faint line down one leg, um, but uh, other than that, uh, they didn't have them defined at all. So there we go. So there he is with his uh, black green uniform on. Um, that's the sort of the base colour that I use. And to tell the truth, it's, it's practically the uniform colour. I mean, I do uh, give it some highlights and stuff, but it's more or less that same colour. I don't use any inks or anything. Um, there's no need to. Uh, so there we go. That's the figure. Uh, it's uh, third stage. So we've done the black. We've done the musket and we've done the uniform now and once again I will uh, cut the video and we'll be back in a second for the next stage okay we're back again uh, now obviously uh, I haven't done any sort of close-ups yet but at the moment there's nothing really to see uh, so uh, at the moment we are um, getting on well with these sort of base colours uh, next two jobs um, are small but um, will help again uh, head towards the point where uh, the figures are more or less all base coloured up now uh, next thing up is uh, the backpacks and uh, for that cut for those uh, French backpacks uh, I like to use uh, green brown here uh, there's the number if you if you're interested and I've actually got loads of bottles of this stuff um, I think I first got it when I was doing my Japanese uh, for Bolt Action a long, long time ago. Uh, and through my own stupidity uh, and getting it in various other paint sets and stuff, I think I've got about six bottles of this stuff floating around. Um, and I think, uh, I think I've think i only ever used like one bottle. I think, I think this is it, actually. There's probably about that much left. Uh, so I don't think I'll ever run out of this stuff. Uh, so I can't say that's a colour that I use a lot. Um, and I actually... Uh, decided to use it for French backpacks quite late on uh, so uh, but I, I think it's a really nice colour for, for backpacks um, it's also a pretty good base colour for things that are khaki if, if, uh, if you're that way inclined to um, normally when I'm doing French uh, I would just paint the whole backpack uh, green brown because uh, obviously the bedroll or the great coat would also be it would be sort of like a fair enough uh, sort of a khaki but it's a nice sort of base colour for it um, but in this case, these guys have got grey uh, grey jackets, so uh, there's no need to actually uh, touch that at all. Now, I tend to leave the bed rolls until quite late uh, in the painting uh, scheme of things, um, just because uh, they're prone to getting paint on as you're sort of going around the collar and stuff, so I decided to just leave it. Uh, so that's the... Um, the backpack on, I might as well just do the other guy at the same time uh, just to uh, save a, a jump cut so like I say uh, the backpack is uh, it's just a, a case of filling it in basically it's, uh, it's nothing too difficult uh, just remember to uh, make sure you don't leave any gaps because otherwise you have to come back and I always find that really annoying. Uh, I think one of my pet peeves is, uh, you know, doing a a uh, something. Do when you're doing sort of six or seven figures at a time, uh, you do something, uh, yet you always manage to miss one of the guys. Uh, and it happens a lot. It happens just about every time I paint, and I don't really know why. Even though I go through them methodic methodically uh, in line, um, I always still manage to to miss uh, one guy out or, or only do sort of half a job on it or something I don't know whether it's that's because I get uh, distracted by something else and, and sort of forget uh, but I mean that can't happen every time can it um, so yeah so there we go uh, that's the uh, backpack's done I think it's a really nice colour um, it's something that I um, kind of swapped over to when I was doing my Imperial Guard um, before that, I was kind of using all sorts of different colours um, for, for French brass backs. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I sort of I fell in love with that colour. And uh, even though uh, French uh, can quite easily have all sorts of different coloured backpacks, uh, that kind of became my norm. 
um, and, and, and uh, to tell the truth it still is. So that's green brown. Next up we do the flash. Now look if you remember me saying um, these chaps uh, are going to be NCOs so uh, I don't need to actually put flesh on their uh, hands this time. Uh, now the colour I always use for my base uh, flash is uh, Panzer Aces Flesh Base funnily enough. Um, I, I really do like this colour um, and, and uh, I think I, I, I just picked it up uh, experimentally one 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 time a long time ago uh, and I liked it so much that it's become my norm uh, and I think this is my second bottle I'm on now um, so it goes to show uh, uh, that I do use it quite a bit of it um, I can't say that I get through massive amounts of paint so I think it's probably black is probably the colour that I get through the most um, so all we're going to do is uh, literally just do his face um, and again, it doesn't really matter if you're if you're a bit messy. Um, in this case, this guy's got a done up collar, so you don't need to really. Uh, he hasn't really got anything on uh, much of his chin sharing, so you don't have to worry about uh, missing his chin under his chin. Um, and literally, we're just gonna literally just fill his face in. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter uh, if he's got his uh, strapping down. Um, in this case doesn't really matter that much because of the angle of his head but uh, sometimes you get the uh, strapping um, sometimes it covers the ear uh, sometimes it doesn't but you uh, it's always annoying when you miss if, if his ear is there and you miss it because you always come across it later and uh, and then wonder why uh, how you managed to miss it so I think it's just a little bit just in uh, I've changed uh, changed brushes now uh, this is my uh, my my primary painting brush at the moment. Um, it's uh, I believe it's a uh, the writing's worn off really quick, but it's a Rosemary and Co. Uh, series eight uh, size one, uh, and uh, yeah, it's a really nice brush. Um, I, I uh, definitely. Uh, it's definitely good for the money. Uh, however, I have actually just decided to uh, repurchase a uh, Winsor & Newton Series 7 uh, size one as well. Um, now, I've had one of these before and it lasted me about five years. Um, and uh, yeah, these things are pricey. Um, now, I can't remember how much I paid for my first one, but I think this was literally maybe a pound more. Um, and this was a £17 brush, um, so I must have paid £16 uh, for my original one, which is probably about six or seven years ago now. Um, maybe, well, maybe say five or six years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, they are very good brushes, these, and, uh, and I suppose uh, the reason why they're so expensive is, I think that's because they're handmade. Um, they're literally all handmade. Um, so, but yeah, they're very nice brushes. Uh, but then again, uh, for for around about half the price, uh, we've got this one here, and, and I can't say that there's too much wrong with it. Um, I mean, I think my only complaint about it is that um, the um, the head can um, sort of lose its shape sometimes when you're painting uh, in mid paint, um, and that's a little annoying because it kind of uh, just explodes and. Uh, becomes like a an uncontrollable uh, mess, and you have to basically uh, wash your brush out and and reshape it. Um, but other than that, um, and it does have. I've actually got two. Uh, I've got one that's a slightly bigger size. I think this is it here. Um, I think this is a size. I think this is a size two. Yeah, size two. You can just about see it. Uh, I was quite surprised at how just how quickly the uh, the writing wore off on these um, because I've, I've had these brushes literally just three or four months and uh, the writing's uh, literally gone on them. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, good good brushes. Um, although nowhere near as good as uh, from my personal experience, uh, Windsor and Newton. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, see. It's just a small process with the. Uh, the other chap on camera too. Um, 
No, like I, like I was saying, there's no need to to be too careful at this stage. Um, you're always going to get a bit of paint on the top of the uh, underside of a shako because um, most of the time, um, especially on elite figures, uh, the eyes are re really just about right underneath the um, uh, that brim, so uh, you can't help but get paint on the uh, on the shako brim. Um, and I'll just paint over the uh, Shaco straps. Uh, these guys have both got straps down. Um, and uh, that's just about done. So there's that stage done. So uh, at the moment we've got just about all the uh, base colours on. Um, I, think, um, I think I might do the black tan backs now uh, and I'll also use this as uh, a point of um, going over some of the black that uh, went on a bit light when I was doing the uh, the contrast um, and that's that's basically uh, the process really it's um, uh, you do get the odd spot where the paint has gone on a little bit light um, but assuming these guys have got black turnbacks and black collars anyway, um, or black, well, coll uh, cuffs rather than turnbacks, um, we'll just literally, uh, this isn't the actual chat that I was talking about. So here you can see that I actually missed the side of this guy's cartridge box, uh, and I actually missed the, the other side of it too. So that's, I'll just fall that in. Uh, we'll do his collar. Be a little bit careful around the collar because we don't want to have to get the flesh out again. In fact, actually, the flesh is still wet. See, so we're just going to do uh, his collar and his cuffs uh, just to get them out of the way because it's all intricate brushwork after this um, there's no more uh, surface painting as uh, uh, per se so now we'll look at just have a quick look at his shako to see if there's any Sort of spots that are a bit too light. So as we can see at the back here, uh, it's I mean it's not too bad, but it's a little bit too light for me. So I'm, I'm basically going to just go over that, and I'll just do a few sort of stripes uh, around the rest of the shako. And because I want his hair to be black, I'll also just fill in a little bit of his hair that. That I miss with the contrast too. There we go. So that's one done, and now the actual figure that we are supposed to be concentrating on. Uh, this chap here will do his uh, turn backs or collar cuffs and collar. Now his cartridge box isn't too bad, but I'll, again, I'll just give it a couple of uh, swipes of the brush over the uh, over the few spots are a little bit lighter, a little bit too light. So that's that, and finally just his collar. Like I said, you, 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 it's worth being careful at this stage when it's not the end of the world if you do make a mistake. But um, for time's sake, uh, it's better if you don't. So this guy, because his head's turned, uh, is making his collar a little bit more difficult to get to. But it's not any problem, really. So yeah, that's done. And I'll just again... Uh, just go over 
it's shaco with a few uh, swipes of black where I think it's uh, gone just a little bit too light. Uh, and we'll just do the brim of his shako. Um, now I'm not too worried about the top of his sober bouquet because uh, that's going to actually uh, be a, uh, a gold colour. Uh, but I will just go over his uh, sober bouquet. And I think that's good. Um, now you can see that there's a little bit of green I missed there. Uh, so while my green is still wet, I will just go back and we will just fill that in. So like I say, you always find spots that you've missed. Um, and to tell you the truth, normally I leave them until uh, a later stage, but um, I'm getting a bit of uh, anxiety when it comes to doing painting on the camera. Uh, so we don't want to leave any mistakes. So there we go. Uh, so that's the guy at the moment. Uh, we've done uh, practically all of the uh, base colours. Um, the next job is going to be uh, the start of the, um, the little bit tedious part of painting these guys, I think, which is the uh, basically going over all their strapping uh, and f uh, starting to do the um, the undercoating for the piping. Um, now. Uh, the colour that I use for, uh, well, it doesn't really matter which which uh, sort of colour you use for the undercoating. I, I tend to use, there's a couple of colours I tend to use. Um, one is uh, Army Painter Spaceship Exterior, um, which is kind of a very, uh, very, very white grey, I suppose you could, you could call it. Um, but because these chaps actually have uh, different coloured strapping, um, I sometimes uh, tend to use an, an off-white as, as, as a, an undercoat, so um, I probably uh, use um, game colour uh, off-white, uh, which is, uh, again, like I say, with, with sort of game colours over model colours. Uh, so here we have um, the off-white uh, model colour on the off-white um, game colour, and you can see that the game colour uh, is a brighter off-white than the uh, model colour one. Um, so I tend to use this as a, as a, a base coat um, but sometimes I swap it around uh, especially when you're doing French with people with white strapping um, I sometimes use uh, game colour as, as the colour of the strapping and I use uh, off-white the model colour off-white as any other sort of white on the figure um, so I think I'm going to use uh, I'll use uh, Vallejo model colour off white as the base for all the uh, strapping on these chaps. Uh, these guys, pom pom colours, are uh, now one of these guys is going to be in the command base. Uh, that's this guy here, and, and you can actually I forgot to mention that you can see that I've bent this guy's musket uh, out to the side a little bit. Uh, now the simple reason for that is uh, so I can get to his face when it comes to time to painting his face um, because this musket is normally uh, more or less up against his shako um, but as you can see at the moment uh, you always get that sort of slightly scrappy look uh, at this stage um, although I've got to say uh, for for um, for a lot of Napoleonics these guys aren't too bad at this stage I um, mean you can see a few uh, bits that I've missed on this particular guy um, this guy's uh, obviously uh, a little better because um, I've already gone over him once but I can still see a few spots that I've missed. Um, now uh, the next stage like I say is going to be the strapping um, and because I've got the white out I'll also do uh, their hands uh, and uh, also obviously uh, this is all basically undercoating for uh, the yellow later um, and we're going to leave the bed rolls for now. Uh, so yeah, cut it here and we'll be back in a second. Next stage. Okay, we're back. 
Uh, and now we're going to go to a smaller brush and we're going to do the yellow piping. Now these guys have a lot of piping. So we're going to start actually at the back, I think, because that's probably the easiest. Now, all of this guy's uh, turn backs uh, have yellow piping around the outsides. Including the bottom of the tails as well. So you want to put in all of the piping, so that's actually all the back done. We're now going to do um, the piping on his collar. So, now on this particular guy, it looks as if he his chin is kind of blocking. A little bit of his colour. Well, they're actually thinking about it. It's not that bad. So we're just going to... Continue on around. Then we have white piping or yellow piping to be around the top of his, uh, his uh, cuffs. And when I've got the thumb brush out, I'm just going to tidy up that strap there. And we might as well do the other side while we're here. Okay, so it's time to wash the brush. Because obviously, uh, this white, white paint tends to dry really quick. So, and obviously, as the drier the brush gets, the more difficult it is to, to apply the paint uh, smoothly. So, I always find that I have to wash the brush out every couple of minutes basically so these are those little bits of decoration they have going down onto their breeches or their trousers then we have white piping around the bottom of his um, waistcoat Like so, and we also have white piping 
around the bottom of the uniform jacket too and we also have the uh, white stripe or the yellow stripe in this case up the uh, uniform jacket basically runs parallel to the buttons and I think that's everything um, on this particular chap anyway so he's already got his epaulettes done collar yep that's everything so not too too bad actually now I'll uh, stop it here uh, I'll do the other guy off camera and I'll be back ok we're back uh, so that's all the uh, undercoating of the piping done and next up uh, we're going to do uh, the next uh, little bit of work on the flash now I always do uh, two coats of flesh paint. Um, obviously the first one was uh, Panzer Ace's flesh base. Uh, the second one that I like to use, especially on male figures, is Barbarian Flesh by uh, Army Painter. So we don't need a, uh, an awful lot of this because basically we're just going to be going over his face. Um, now this is like a... Um, a brighter uh, flash uh, because sometimes the base flash can look quite dark um, and I tend to uh, the next couple of stages of the flash after this uh, ten, uh, has a tendency to make it go a little bit darker so I always go in with this uh, brighter flash um, at this stage uh, to uh, lighten the colour. Now I suppose you could, um, I mean you could, you know, well, you, I suppose you could say well why why do you just not bother with the flash base and just put this straight on now? Yeah you could do that. Um, I think that uh, you'd get that same sort of problem. Uh, it would be uh, darker. So there we go. Now you can see that it's already his my uh, face is looking brighter can, if I compare it to the other chap um, and it's a nice that's a, that's basically the uh, the coat that will take the uh, the inking uh, another stage um, we're, we're doing pretty well actually at the moment I think once we get the uh, yellow piping done uh, this guy will start to look uh, pretty much well on the road to being complete. Now I wouldn't say that these guys take mega amounts of time to do but um, they are, I'd say they're probably uh, slower than uh, just about every other type of perhaps a SARS might take longer. Um, okay so uh, there we go that's the sort of the uh, I suppose you could say that's the base colours on now. Um, obviously we haven't touched the musket yet now um, I, there's no definite stage to when I do this, but I'll just do it now. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically going to use some chocolate brown, uh, which is the colour that I always use for uh, French muskets. Uh, although, to tell you the truth, I, I think I've probably used it on some British ones too. Um, I used to like using flat brown uh, on, on uh, British muskets, uh, and I, I, generally I do. Um, but uh, even though these muskets... Uh, theoretically could be a uh, British pattern, uh, they're not supposed to be so I'll use the chocolate brown and all I'm basically going to do is uh, literally just run run a stripe uh, down either side um, and over the ramrod there 
Okay, that's all, that's all we need to do uh, with that. That's just such a very small process. Um, now the wild wood actually uh, went on really quite well uh, on this this particular chap. Sometimes you do get uh, like the black uh, spots where it doesn't quite go on uh, quite as strong. Uh, but either way, um, if it was like that, it would get covered over at this stage. Uh, okay, that's good enough. So a really quick stage there. Uh, next up, I think we're going to start doing the um, the yellow piping. So uh, let's get going. Now, historically, uh, these chaps uh, strapping are, um, is actually referred to as yellow ochre. So uh, strangely enough, uh, I like to use uh, model colour yellow ochre. Uh, which is actually a yellow that I use a lot. Um, I find that this uh, is an absolutely amazing uh, base colour to doing any sort of yellow. Um, this is my primary yellow that I use on all my all my figures. Um, if there's anything yellow, it's going to get a coat of this. Um, now what I tend to do is I either mix it with a slightly brighter yellow if it's got to be a brighter yellow. Um, but in this case, um, I'm basically going to go... Now, I suppose theoretically you could say, well, why don't you use uh, yellow ochre on the strapping and then use like deep yellow or something uh, on the piping. Um, no, that's too much bother. There's no need to do it. Uh, I just use yellow ochre as the base colour uh, for everything that's yellow. Uh, and you'll see uh, the slight differences uh, as we go on. So, um, figures already. Now, I suppose the only thing we haven't done at the moment is uh, we haven't put this guy's uh, NCO stripes on. Uh, but we'll do that. I gen generally tend to do that uh, towards the end. Uh, so we'll leave that for now. And we're also, of course, uh, leaving the... Actually, thinking about it, I, I suppose I could do the actual um, changing plans here a little bit. Um, like I say, there's no actual uh, fixed time when I do the uh, the bat the um, great coats on the backs of the backpacks. Uh, but just thinking about it, uh, this has actually got a good time to do it because uh, I have the yellow out uh, and of course uh, it does have yellow strapping so um, it'll just mean me having you know been able to save some time um, when I've got the yellow out. Uh, general, like I said generally there's no fixed time for me to do that um, so sometimes I've left it almost to the point where the figure is almost done um, well, I've just kind of forgotten about it. Um, but generally, it gets done around about this sort of this sort of time. Um, I have done it uh, in the past before, where um, I've actually done the yellow sh the yellow piping and the yellow strapping, and then I uh, have to actually come back to to uh, yellow a little bit later on, and just literally to fill in the uh, the strapping. Uh, but in this case, uh, we'll take the initiative and uh, do it now, and then that way. Uh, I won't need to actually come back. So I use neutral grey uh, for uh, these guys' uh, great coats. Uh, according to the St. Jerome site, they only use grey ones, um, which is, uh, I think, just about every um, sort of French minor nation uh, tended to have uh, grey long coats uh, in a lot larger numbers than any other colour so I don't know if that was something to do with you know, perhaps that's the colour that they, they supplied to their allies um, but obviously with the Dutch Belgians uh, they also have the British great coats so it's uh, I haven't read anything to say that these guys had uh, British great coats but we we'll just assume they're French ones so that's the uh, grey down on both of those guys and now we're going to start doing the strapping and uh, what we'll do is I'll leave the uh, the strapping on the great coats until the very end uh, hopefully that'll be dry by that point so like I say a yellow ochre um, model colour this is an absolutely amazing colour. Um, I, I recommend everyone have a bottle of this in their painting collection. 
uh, because uh, it's um, you can pa basically paint it straight on to any other colour. Um, however, I always think it looks better under a white. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, under a white or a light uh, base cut base base colour. So let's now again. I'm probably going to do this in uh, two stages. Uh, we'll do the thicker strapping first, and we'll do the um, piping with a thinner brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is the musket sling. Like so. And the other thing I'm going to do when I'm thinking about it is the musket straps. Oh, not musket straps. Backpack straps, sorry. And these don't really need an undercoat, they can just be painted over straight with yellow. And now we'll start on the strapping. Obviously this bit is a little bit time consuming because you want to be careful uh, because uh, like I say the yellow will paint onto the green and I actually am going to do the piping on his this brush is actually delicate enough to to do the piping uh, if you're careful So I think I'll do a stripe there and Boom. And
Was für die? Trouser stripe. Of course, if you do happen to make a mistake, you can always just go over it with a little bit of black at a later stage. Now we are going to be getting the black out again at some point. Um, I always uh, get it out and just go over any bits that are a bit messy. So I think I've managed to do all of this guy's yellow uh, using the size one. Just got the other little tiny bit of yellow. The bottom of his trousers there. So there we go. You can see that he's had all of his yellow piping done. I just over that bit again, it's a little bit weak. So that is the first chap done. Again, I'll just go over his leg strap again there. There we go. And uh, because now his uh, strapping is dry, um, we can actually do the uh, strap on his. Backpack. Okay, and this guy, it's the other guy. I'll do him off camera actually, I'll just I'll do his pom pom on camera. Hopefully I was in shot when I was doing the other guy because I must admit I'm looking at the figure rather than looking at the uh the camera screen at the moment. So right, I'll do the rest of him off off uh, camera and we'll be back. Sorry about that. Guys, the camera uh, decided to auto shut off. Uh, so, like I say, I was just uh, doing the metallics. And, uh, like I say, uh, I prefer to have a shiny bayonet. Which is why I uh, use uh, a steel colour. Rather than a uh, the lead belcher colour on the bayonets. Now obviously if this was a um, a unit that used silver as the uh, button colour and metallic colour I'd also be doing the uh, chin straps and the epaulets etc. Uh, but in this case these guys have uh, the yellow coloured uh, metal for their buttons and stuff. So... Uh, that's all we need to do for metallics on these guys. So, watch the rush out and we're ready to go. Next up, because uh, that's the muskets basically done now, uh, I think we're going to go for the um, the undercoat for the metallic, the, uh, the yellow gold 
or the yellow gold colour. Uh, and I tend to use a darker brown for, for an undercoat for that. And uh, in this case, uh, I, tend, I like to use charred brown. Um, although, I, I, well, I don't know. I mean, uh, for, for experimentation, I found that a darker brown gives you a slightly better undercoat than if you use a lighter brown. And when it comes to painting gold, um, now there's not a massive amount of uh, of that bronze colour on these chaps. Um, it's basically just a couple of buttons and the sabre briquet. And we'll also do the bottom of the Sabre Riquet. Because we always have that yellow gold or yellow metal. Uh, it's probably brass actually to tell the truth, but it's more of a yellow brass than a than the actual brass colour. Um so I tend to like using uh, old gold, but the non the slightly less non-metallic version uh, rather than the uh, uh, than this version um, which is a very metallic this is liquid gold um, I tend to use the old school uh, where is it here uh, old gold uh, for uh, the enlisted men and I use the uh, you can also use this brown actually to, to tidy up your muskets as well. If you've, if you've missed anything. So I think there's one button there. Done the sober bouquet. Done the bottom of his uh, done the bottom of the scabbard. And the only thing that's left, which is one of those things that you sometimes forget actually, is the uh, the chin straps. So that's the chin strap done, and we're just going to go in and catch that little bit that's missed there, like that. Okay, we'll just quickly do the other guy, because this is, like I say, it's such a... Small job, really. I mean, the biggest surface area that you paint is really just the silver bouquet, really. So, at this stage, um, sometimes I don't bother uh, separating the bit where the uh, tassel attaches to the sober bouquet. I tend to do that at a later stage. I just go back over it in white. Um. And we just get the two little tabs that attach it to the the frog of the. Uh, the strapping okay and just a final look at the bay the musket just to make sure the you haven't gone over it and another colour by accident, like I have there. 
a little bit of yellow. There we go, that's done. So that is basically all of the base colours done now. Um, the figure is uh, at his uh, fully sort of uh, filled in state. Um, it, c it does need a sort of a, a go back in with the green and, and tidy up some rough edges, uh, but I'll, tr I'll probably do that right at the end uh, because uh, highlighting will uh, cover over some of those areas. Uh, but yeah, we're ready for the next stage of uh, giving them the, the, the starts of their. Uh, shading or the ink ink stage as I call it so for this stage we'll be using the classic Agrax earth shade and for the flesh we'll be using uh, some Reichland shade now this is a Reichland shade gloss uh, that was sent to me by a uh, mistake one, at one point um, now normally this would annoy me uh, but because I uh, varnish my guys um, the gloss if there is any gloss well I can't actually tell there's, there's any gloss to it myself um, but um, I'll be getting rid of that gloss with the uh, when it's varnished of course uh, at the end so um, yeah so it's this for flash and Agrax Earth Shade for the uh, the strapping um, we'll do the flesh first um, now this I find this flesh colour um, I normally I used to use Agrax Earth Shade actually uh, for flesh and sometimes I still do um, but I find that um, using this occasionally uh, just gives that sort of slightly lighter flesh flesh colour uh, that Agrax Earth Shade sometimes doesn't uh, especially since it's a uh, new formulation um, So pretty simple, pretty simple stage that actually. And also while I'm here, I just noticed that I actually forgot to do uh, the other chap's uh, chin strap. Which one with brown is still wet? I will fill in now. Okay. Now this guy does have a moustache, uh, which again I'm, I'm going to actually wait until I get the black out to do that. I'm not going to get it out at this point. So that's the flesh done on both these chaps. Uh, now we'll do the the Agrax Earth Shade on the uh, the strapping. Now I find that this just gives it uh, that slight sort of ye uh, leather look, um, which differentiates it from the rest of the piping. Um, you don't want it. I find that if it's too dark, uh, it doesn't look quite as good. Uh, so you want a sort of, uh, you don't want it sort of gulped on there. You just want a, just a simple uh, brushful, uh, a normal sort of brush, brush load. Um, and just go over the, literally just the strapping. And of course, not forgetting the backpack or the actual musket um, sling so again we'll do the same sort of thing There we go. That's that stage done. Okay, I'm gonna cut it there and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna do uh, some highlighting on the green. So for that, I use uh, a little bit of black green and um, 
a slightly bigger amount of uh, gunship green and just uh, sort of uh, roughly mix it together. Uh, you kind of you're looking for a sort of lighter, slightly lighter green uh, as as you would. And uh, I've already done the other guy actually, uh, so we'll go on to uh, this chap here. So uh, now uh, this is what I do. Uh, obviously, other people have different ideas, but I always just do a little bit uh, on that side and down the outside of the arm down the leg and I kind of flare it out a little bit down the middle of the trouser around the crotch area and just a stripe down that leg and I'll just carry that a little bit across the knee and then again a kind of a little triangle at the bottom of the trouser leg and this is very this is a sort of subtle highlighting it's not really you know, going to stick out that much but that's what you really want you just want to or at least when I do it anyway I, I just try and uh, pick where uh, the light would bounce off uh, a particular figure's uh, body part and we're just going to put a a stripe down the back there, and there we go. That's all the green highlighting done. Uh, you can hardly tell it's even on there at this, at this stage. So, let's wash my brush out. Okay, so uh, what's next? So, as you can see, we're starting to get towards uh, the end now. Um, so, we've done the greens, we've done all the, the strapping, uh, the gloves are. Uh, white, uh, so they don't really need any more work on them. Um, the pom pom colours, I suppose we could do uh, this guy's pom pom. So, like I said, uh, this uh, is the NCO for the third company, which is always my NCO stand. Um, and I'm going to use uh, game colour electric blue, uh, which is my colour that I use for British water bottles too. And we're just going to hit it with that. Now the very first time I did it uh, on my very first battalion I actually mixed a little bit of white in. But I don't think I'm going to bother this time. Um, it's When you look at the colour it could be either or. Um, it's uh, it's so, so similar. Um, I suppose the white kind of gives it a nice sort of sky blue colour. Uh, but to tell the truth. Uh, it's hardly noticeable so we're just going to go with uh, straight up electric blue I think or at least that's what I've done for the other three chaps that are in his company this time round and I've even done the flag tassels um, in the same colour too where uh, from my very first battalion um, I actually uh, used the slightly lighter version of this paint by just adding a little bit of white um, so there we go he's got his third company pom pom and we'll just catch the very bottom there pom poms are another um, thing that I tend to always find that I miss a spot on uh, really annoyingly So that's that done, and now we're going to go on to the uh, gold metallics. Uh, so like I said, these guys um, are down as having yellow metal buttons uh, rather than uh, brass. So I find that the brass colour is a little bit too dark a version of gold, so I like using old gold um, when it comes to yellow, uh, yellow metal buttons. Um, now this does this is my, one of my favourite golds, um, but it's not as metallic as the uh, the liquid gold that I showed you a little earlier. Um, this colour here, uh, this is like really metallic and really shiny, and I tend to use that for officers. Um, so I've already got a little bit down here, 
Now this is where um, basically um, I'm going to do the bottom of the uh, musket here because it always has a brass butt plate and that goes for both the British and the French versions. Uh, we're going to go for the uh, the trigger guard again which is uh, a br brass, probably brass I'd say and there's always a brass plate there just at the side now like I say these guys uh, have got brown bass muskets so they, they don't have the the, uh, the metal ribbing um, they do kind of have a, like a little metal plate a little brass plate uh, around about there um, so it's that part done And then I always, you can't really see it actually, but um, I'd, I'd normally uh, do part of the, f the flint me mechanism. Uh, I think the frizzen, the frizzen pan is uh, brass on a on the Indian pattern musket, I believe. So we're just going to do his helmet straps. Like so, I'm going to do the bottom of his so be briquet. And finally, well, second to final actually, do the two uh, attachments on his bayonet that attach his uh, scabbard to his strapping, and then we will paint in the zebra bouquet. Uh, and then the final thing we have to do on him, which I'm just going to actually do off camera because I've got to get close, uh, is those couple of, well there are three buttons uh, that are visible. Which I'm not sure if I can put a focus to actually come out here, yeah, there you go. So you can see... Uh, that's all the gold done on him now. Um, he doesn't have anything on the back of him. So I'll repeat that with the second guy. I'll do the bottom of the butt plate. This guy, uh, you can see uh, the frozen pan cover. So I'll paint that. Uh, brass or bronze rather brass with bronze I do it both sides and here's Sabre Rike and the bottom of the Sabre Rike of course Now sometimes uh, with these chaps you get a a sort of uh, all brass colour uh, scabbard for the uh, bayonet. Um, I'm always one for just going with, with black myself. Um, I think the earlier ones were, were all brass. Um, So we've done everything on the musket apart from 
the strap on his uh, sling and that one little half barrel band the bottom half of the musket and then finally the buttons for this chap now again I'm gonna to have to go off camera uh, to do this because it's just a little bit too intricate to do at the distance of me holding the in front of the camera and then there is actually one final thing which again I almost forgot which is his Helmet strap, of course, or a Shaco strap. Which is pretty easy to do because... His uh, musket's out of the way. You can imagine this being a little bit, a little bit fiddly if you uh, didn't bend his musket out of the way. And it's also almost impossible to get to the eye. Okay, so that's them almost done now. So next up, I think we have, let's do a little bit of mental uh, thought about this process. So we have um, the face to do, so the eyes, the whites of the eyes, the uh, highlighting of the flesh, the black eyewall, and um, when I got the black out, I just go over any bits that are rubbed off. So, like for instance, the corner of that guy's shako is just rubbed there, um, and anything that I've missed on the arm. So here, there's a little bit of gold uh, spread off from the. Uh, putting the gold on the musket, so I'll just go over that when I've got the black out. And uh, then I'll be just in another sort of final look over um, to make sure uh, with some green. Um, and then the final sort of two stages, which is basically just some uh, an Agrax Earth Wash shade over the flash. And uh, then some highlighting, final highlighting with some uh, deck tan. And uh, that will be uh, the two figures complete. So let's get on and do the eyes next. So for eyes, uh, I, again I use uh, different colours, different colours for eyes. I use um, whatever it's ha whatever it's at hand really. But these are three three the three main colours that I tend to use for eyes. Uh, so we have uh, that Starship exterior again, which gives you a nice uh, subtle eyeball. Um, if their eyes are kind of in uh, deep uh, recesses and within the sort of under the shako, um, I'd, I'd tend to use this brighter light white or off white, sorry. And uh, just depending on how I feel, um, I also use this off white uh, as as a, a base colour for eyeballs too. Um, so I think on these guys, I'm going to go for uh, just straight up off white. Um, I don't think front rank have got particularly difficult eyes to paint uh, from from memory. Um, I always find Perry's um, Perry's are the master. Well, I suppose Elite do it sometimes as well. Elite are the masters of having very very deep eye recesses, uh, which are quite difficult to get into. Um, Perry's tend to have uh, very very small eyes and also. Um, Sometimes flash in the eyes as well, which stops the, stops you from doing a a straight eyeball. Uh, now these guys, uh, I'm probably going to have to do this off camera actually, um, but you can see that the you, you can kind of see the eyes quite easily defined there. Um, that they're a good size. Um, I'll obviously when I've got the blackout as well, I'll just do the underneath of the shaker as well. Uh, but let's first of all uh, get the eyes done on this guy. So, using a thin brush,
So there we go, two eyes. And for the next guy, but we also got to do this guy's moustache as well, actually. So actually, on my brush here, you can see that there's a rogue hair there. Now, I'm going to give it a chance to uh, go back into the brush, but I've got a funny feeling it's a rogue hair. Um, I mean, it looks okay at the moment, but it might stick out again. Uh, if it, I always find that if I have a rogue hair like that that keeps sticking out, um, it can be a hindrance uh, because, especially when you're doing like really fine detail, uh, even though there's like a literally just a speck of paint on it, um, it will still um, make an unnecessary mark at the time when you least want it to. Um, so I always tend to actually pluck those hairs out. Um, Now, I am having trouble getting to his eye uh, with this musket, so I'm going to have to do this part off camera. Sorry about that, just bang the camera. One last eyeball to do, let's see if I can do this one on camera. So, got it. I need to wash the brush out and do it again because it's uh. The white was dried or drying. That's the thing I find with white. White seems to, out of all the colours, seems to dry the fastest, and I don't really know why. Uh, actually, that wasn't too bad. You can see it there. I just like it just a little bit. Longer if I can. There we go, that's, that's slightly better. So still, no, actually not, still a little bit short. There is actually a little bit of a mould line right across this guy's eyeball. Uh, that's something that I find that parries uh, do, like to, to do a lot. Um, So that's, that's not too bad now. So that's the eyes done. Next up we'll do the highlights for the flash. Before that I've actually spotted guy. I've forgotten to do his epaulette there. So we'll just quickly go in and there you go. Just pull that in. And while I'm here, just check there's no other yellow bits that have been, that's been missed. So those bits were a little, little light. I think that's fine. Okay, so now back to what we were originally going to do, which was the flash highlighting. So I use uh, Vallejo Base Flash. Is it base flash? Flat flash, sorry. Uh, for highlighting. 
Um, this is actually my second bottle. Um, I think this bottle is actually um, slightly worse than my first bottle I had. Um, but it's still, it's not too bad. Um, I don't, you obviously don't need very much of it. Um, especially seeing these guys have, have literally just got faces and no, uh, no hands either. So obviously we have got to do the um, moustache on this chap, but uh, sometimes it's handy to actually do uh, the flesh highlighting before uh, you actually um, touch the moustache because uh, it's possible to get paint on the moustache. So my method of, of highlighting faces is I uh, do the bottom of the chin, I do the ears, and uh, I always put a little bit uh, underneath the eye, which I'm going to have to do off camera because it's too tiny to get into. So I just go around the top of the eye, across his nose. And then the same for the opposite side. Um, and of course, not forgetting his uh, second, uh, his other ear. So there's that chap done. And next one, this should be, uh, this guy's clean shaven, so it should be a little easier to show. So, I always, I guess I start with the ear, and then run that down across the top of his cheek to his nose, down his chin and across the bottom, underneath his lip, and of course, nose. Very, very minimal amounts of paint on these chaps. And literally just his other ear. Okay, that's the fresh highlighting done. Very simple. Right, so now we will get some black out. And this is the final sort of going over for bits of mist black so I tend to use a stick with a thin brush and we're just going to first of all do the underneath of his shako I'm going to do the top of his bayonet scabbard I'm going to give the Sabre Briquet a black handle. Now some Sabre Briquets had black handles, some didn't. Um, just going to tidy up just beneath the pom-pom there. Got some... Uh, a little bit of over overpainting on the pom-pom. And then just a couple of... Uh, Little bits where the black paint scratched off his shako uh, during painting, from you know, from knocking him over or whatever. Um, and of course, his moustache—you mustn't forget that. Although this guy, although this guy hasn't got one, uh, let's just chat that. That's got the moustache, so uh, we'll do that. I'll do underneath his shako. Just a few bits where the paint 
ripped off. And this bit off camera I've actually uh, missed part of his heel. Um, well, actually, I don't think I missed it. It's just on. It's just not very. Uh, just didn't go on very strongly. So we're actually going to sub a bit more black paint on the shoe here. Because I think the Black Templars kind of uh, rubbed off while I've been painting. There you go, just doesn't need too much. Okay, and uh, next up will be the eyeballs, and we'll come back for that, so catch you in a second. Okay, we're back. Um, we're going to try and do the eyes now. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do them on camera. Uh, we shall try. Actually, if I move the camera up because it's kind of in the way, I won't be able to do it. Again, my black seems to have uh, dried up really quite quickly. So, can't really, probably can't, can just about see that thing. The only trouble with raising the camera is that it's taken me uh, off of the centre line of viewing the screen, so I'm getting a, um, a pretty poor uh, sight picture of what the camera's seeing. Um, Okay, so the eyes are done now. If I can get that to come up, there we go. I'm now going to return the camera back down to a low level. Um, and then we'll do the, uh, there's basically three steps left. Um, is the, the sergeant stripes, the uh, finishing off of the flash, and then um, the uh, last final highlight, and they'll be done. Uh, so uh, join me again in a second, uh, and uh, I'll be with you. We're we'll back. Um, now there's actually one other step uh, that I forgot to mention. Uh, so first of all, uh, we are going to uh, do the uh, sergeant stripes. Uh, now these guys... Um, do follow the French style, um, however they don't seem to have the triangle uh, that the French use, uh, so their sergeants are uh, just the standard two stripes. Uh, so we're going to attempt to paint these on um, without any um, undercoat. So these are this is a yellow ochre straight onto green. And you can see that it goes on perfectly. Um, providing you've got some paint on your brush at Classic uh, disjointed view I'm looking through the camera. I'm not looking at what I'm doing. Um, 
Actually, no, I'm not happy with that. I've put it too far in the middle. So, it's no problem. I can just grab a little bit of uh, black green. I have to find it. That's the trouble when you're doing sergeant stripes. You've got to make sure you leave room for two of them. I might actually do, do it off camera actually. Uh, so uh, I'll do them and I'll be back. Hold on. Okay YouTube, uh, welcome back to the last part of this video. Uh, so here we have the uh, final uh, the final uh, product, the two uh, finished NCOs, um, all done and dusted. Um, these guys um, are the last two infantry uh, of the uh, battalion. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's been quite a lot, bit longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long this is going to be all together. Um, because I haven't actually uh, looked at all the uh, the separate parts put together yet. Uh, but uh, I suppose at the least it'll be something nice to listen to in the background if you're painting. Um, and uh, yeah, it gives you an insight into uh, how I paint these guys. And uh hope you enjoyed it. So uh, that's the end. Uh, like I say, I've literally just got three officers to do. Or three command to do. Uh, and I will have uh, finished this battalion, so look out for, for the video on these chaps uh, in a day or two. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all uh, in the next one. Bye-bye.